All right, let's talk about mark making and asymmetric writing and in, in, um, and using those in your in your paintings. So um, first of all, we'll talk about the asymmetric writing, which <clears throat> there is many, many samples just on the internet. Just uh, Google asymmetric writing and uh, it'll bring up all kinds of, of ideals for you to use. Um, in my opinion, we all have our own natural rhythm and handwriting, and that shows up in what I do. Um, but you can also practice and learn uh, to imitate other languages and handwritings, uh, symbols, you can use symbols, uh, or the idea of it is to not actually use the real symbol, but that same character style so that someone recognizes it, causes them to look, and um, can you can use it to lead the eye around, just to add interest to something, or to really bring attention to an area that you won't. Um, here are some examples that I pulled up, which there's many, many more. Uh, this is some watercolor done with the Asimic writing. Let me see how close I can get for you. And, and really, they used it for the composition, and it's just beautiful. And you do stop to look at it uh, because our our brains are are geared to, you know, writing is communication. So this artist is communicating with us. We want to stop and see what they're what they're saying. <clears throat> this is another good example of using it in uh, the composition. And there's many, many more. Uh, this is some writing that I did. And I would, I'll just show you a little bit of how I do it. So, for some reason, I find it easier to go from right to left. And it flows more naturally. Something about going left to right, my usual way of writing, kind of tells me, no, that's not right. Do it some do it this way. So I just find that writing this way, I can get that look of the ups and downs of letters and loops and forms. That this way, I actually want to do it correctly. So find a good way with you. Um, I do it a lot. I need a lot more practice. I want to explore it more to see what I can do with it because I think it's amazing and fascinating to see in a piece of artwork. <clears throat> so first assignment is to look on the internet, see what you can find of interest to you about the Asimic writing, and do a little practice. Practice it and see what comes naturally to you, and then think about how you can incorporate that into your work. So then the next subject that I wanted to talk to you about was mark making. And this is tools of mark making. And that can be anything you discover, have around your house, try it all. Just see what works. Um, I don't have a really good selection anymore like I used to when I was doing um, journaling and before I uh, closed my studio and we moved in the RV, I had a huge selection of all kinds of materials and things that I sold or gave away. So now I'm slowly adding all that stuff back. But um, of course, you know, one thing is with the... Um, the mark making is the pencils, the different colored pencils, the different types of pencils. And uh, then also I use the uh, R and F paint sticks. They come in different colors. 
and that's going to use in a piece of work. You can use that in the beginning or you can use it on top of the wet paint or dry paint. And then another one is the um, oil pastels to make marks with. And then I just go around, if I see a little tool that looks interesting, like this little tool, I use it to see how it works. Another thing that I like to use is the, these are the little oiler boiler uh, jars and I fill them with Gamsol and it's an, a little needle. One I have is medium and one is very fine and you can, on the wet paint, after you've done several layers, um, put some of this down, drop it, stream it, however you want to do it, play with it in a rhythm, and let it set a little bit. And then with your bowl scraper, you can gently wipe away some of that paint that it's softened. And that leaves beautiful, natural looking marks um, in your work. And I've demonstrated that before, but um, I need to practice that some more too. I do love it. And then, of course, anything like this little fork. Let's see if you can see it. It's kind of dark. This little spork. Uh, you can make marks in the in the wet paint. A skewer, and I like both ends. I like the round end and the pointed end. I draw sometimes with this. I, it makes great looking circles or lines, straight lines. But you could do the acemic writing with this too. Be great. And uh, I've, of course, the palette knives. And I have a variety of palette knives. But my favorite one for mark making is this spatula looking one. Can you see that? It, um, there it is. It makes marks so pretty. I just love it. It has a little bit of a rounded edge. The paper back. It has a rounded edge, so you don't really gouge your, your paper when using this. So I love it. And, um, then there's all kinds of textures to make marks with. Uh, this is some shelf liner, and you can put it on the wet paint and make marks, or you can paint on it and make positive marks with it. And I do that a lot, as well as bubble wrap. Bubble wrap can be used for that, and you can use it over and over again. And then save little pieces of cor cor corrugated um, cardboard. This is just an Amazon box that I pulled the paper off of one side. And that makes great lines. Love, love using this. Uh, this is just my little collection of papers and things. But be creative. Grab other things. Another thing that is uh, great is tissue paper that you kind of crinkle up in place and then run the brayer over it. Any of these, you can run the brayer across it to press it down. And while I'm at it, I'll show you. I do have quite a collection of different sized brayers. And you, I paint with these some. I haven't in a while. But um, you can put the paint down with this as well as, um, you know, putting it on the, on the papers. So I use those a lot. You can even take your squeegee that you're rubbing, you know, that you're smoothing your paint out with. And you can, you can make marks with it. It will mark into it. So just play with that. See what it does. This one has some different shaped edges, which, um, you know, you could really do some neat little things with that. And then rubber stoppers. 
that anything that's rubber makes a great mark marking tool. So um, I, I like to do circles with this. Uh, you can press on it and pull up the paint and then you, it leaves paint on there. So go to a, another spot and put it down. That's fun to play with. Um, these are, I um, forget what they're called, uh, color shapers or something like that. Um, they're kind of a rubber. And you, you can actually put the paint down with this, or you can go in and, and kind of squeegee it off with it. I've got two different sizes. I've used them on some that I really kind of had fun with, but they're not something I pick up all the time. So uh, it, I would suggest picking something up every once in a while, fresh approach. You know, you're, you're different every day you paint. So what works one day might not the next and the, you know, the other way around. This is just a kitchen spatula and you can also put paint down with that. Uh, these kind of things uh, help to not put down uh, that perfect shape. It's very organic when you put paint down with something like this. So, you know, you, you don't have as much control with it. So it's more organic. That's fun to play with. Um, and, and again, you know, there's just no limit to... Um, if it works, use it. A foil, crumbled up foil that you could make uh, marks would be fun to play with. Uh, you can make stamps. You can make your own stamps and put on there. And then I have some things that I use more with the acrylics than I do with the oil. But they can also be used with the oil. And that's these pre-made stencils. So I, I have these because I like to do the jelly prints and I'll use these texture stencils for that. But you can also, you can see I've used some with the acrylic, but you could also use this with the oil. You could, you could press it down on um, wet paint or you could apply the paint. You could apply the paint through the stencil and have that stencil mark. So those are great to have on hand. Here's a pre-made stamp that you can use. It does, again, works better with the acrylics than it does with the oil. Uh, this is just a little piece of wood, a little circle. And I thought that would be cool. That would give me something. It wouldn't be a solid circle because of it's not cut smoothly or sanded. So it would kind of show the grain. I thought that would be fantastic to try. So get creative and start looking at everything you see as a possible mark making tool and see what you can do with it. All right. Thanks for joining me.